Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if this is going to help anybody or not, <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> um, if you have your Bibles, I, I want to <clears throat> look over into some scripture. I, Taj asked me if I had verses. I said, man, just flow with me. Hallelujah. I really, <clears throat> I was thinking this week, the Lord began to talk to me about the oil. It's just been pressing on me, the oil. Hallelujah. And let me adjust this real quick. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We're not going to follow protocol tonight. We're just going to follow the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody needs help. Amen. Amber Dunn sung the fire down. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, Amber will get to a place when that anointing comes on her. She'll be able to sing through it. Hallelujah. And, and right now it's so heavy that she just begins to cry and weep. But um, she'll get to the place where she can sing through it and operate through it. Give me a, a towel. Thank you. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 16. The Lord impressed on me about the oil. This last week I was preaching and I got to preaching about the oil. And when I say the oil, how many knows what I'm talking about? Yes. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. And, and I begin to think about what hinders the oil in our life. What hinders the oil in our life. Um, I got to preaching in a church and the prophetic began to come up in me as it often does when well, when I'm in here, it happens. When I'm in revival, it definitely happens. The prophetic is very strong. And the Lord began to reveal some things to me while I was ministering. Thank you, sir. And uh, I don't know, maybe this will help somebody. But in First Samuel chapter 16, it says, um, And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with what? Oil. Oil. Hallelujah. And go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I've provided me a king among his sons. Hallelujah. God becomes his own Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. God becomes his own Jehovah Jireh. Um, of course, this is where Saul, who was the original first king of Israel, has disobeyed God, rejected his word. God couldn't use him anymore. He cared more about what the people thought in his position. And you've heard me often say that many times. He cared more about that than he did about the will of God. And so God stripped the kingdom from Saul. He rejected him from reigning over Israel. And it wasn't because God was just upset and rejected him. It was really because Saul rejected God's word. And, and, and it says that in scripture that God says, I rejected him because he rejected my word. In other words, um, he was reprobate. God couldn't do nothing with him. He couldn't, he couldn't use him. He couldn't control him. He couldn't, couldn't speak to him. And so he says, I can't, I can't do nothing with him. So he, he, he rejected him from reigning. He stripped the anointing from him. And then he tells the prophet, he says, I want you to go fill this horn with oil. And I want you to go to Jesse's house. Because I've provided me a king among his sons, and I want you to pour oil on him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but we see an issue here with Samuel. And somebody needs to hear this. I'm just moving prophetically tonight. I don't have any notes. I'm just following the Holy Spirit. Um, I can preach without notes in case you're wondering. Hallelujah. Uh, I've, I've, I've done it all my life, but this is the season. God moves in different ways. But notice 
the issue here was with the prophet. He says to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? The fact that the prophet was mourning, watch this, he was mourning over what God rejected. He was mourning over what God was done with. He was mourning over wasn't, what wasn't working anymore. Come on, are you following me? Which means that the prophet had an emotional connection. He had a soul tie to something that God was done with. And here he is with a soul tie to something that the spirit is trying to disconnect him from. Hallelujah. There are many people in that place right now. Hallelujah. You've got a soul tie. You've got a connection to something that God is not wanting in your life. And you don't want to let it go. That tie is holding you to something that the Spirit's trying to disconnect you from. And the problem with most Christians is that we don't know the difference between the voice of our emotions and the voice of the Holy Spirit. We confuse emotions for the Holy Ghost all the time. And we say things like, I feel like, I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like. Hallelujah. There are things that you're feeling that ain't always the Holy Spirit telling you to do that. It's not, it's not an inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Many times there are emotions, there are things that tie us to stuff that God is trying to disconnect us from. But here's the issue with the prophet. He's got this emotional tie to something that God has rejected that's not going to move or not going to work in his life. And it's hindering the oil. What do you mean? It's hindering the oil. Yeah, yeah. He's got to go and take that oil and cause it and call out David from the shepherd's field and pour that oil on him so God can move on with the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we might preach tonight. I don't know. I might just talk to you. Hallelujah. But sometimes what hinders the oil in our life is this, that we don't want to move on from seasons. We don't want to move on from things. We don't want to move on from relationships. We don't want to move on from addictions and bondages. Come on, hallelujah. We don't want to move on from hurts and we don't want to move on from pains. We've, we've got ties to stuff in our life that God has rejected and said, that's not working anymore. That's not going to do it anymore. You're not going to be able to have a marriage like you need to have acting like that anymore. Come on. I said, come on. You're not going to be able to have a ministry still acting like that and still having stuff like that in your life and we're connected to stuff that's holding up the oil and God is ready to pour out his oil he was ready to pour out his oil in Israel and move on with the kingdom it was time for the kingdom to shift it was time for the kingdom to come out of the Saul administration and go into the David administration it was time for the kingdom to come out of where people had control to where God was having control again David was going to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. Saul had not inquired of the ark and the presence of God, all of his ministry. And God said, I'm trying to bring the presence back. I'm trying to bring the glory back. I'm trying to bring revival back to Israel. But I got a prophet that's attached to the past. And God saying, if you want the oil to flow in your life, you got to let me disconnect you from some stuff. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I, I don't know. I, we, I just been through too much. Oh, shut up. Hallelujah. I just been through too much. I just been through too much. No, no. God wants to free your soul. Hallelujah. Our soul gets stuck. Do you know that you can develop in the flesh, you can develop in age, you can develop in your body, you can grow up, you can get older, you can get, you can get so old you get sunspots, you can get so old you get wrinkles, and your soul never grows. Are you hearing me? Your soul grows on its own timetable. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And a lot of times our soul gets trapped. Our mind and will and emotions get trapped in seasons and areas. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. And God wants to move in our lives, but we're still stuck back in 10 years ago, five years ago, what he said, what she said, what you did, that failure you made, that offense, hallelujah, that trapped you. Oh, that's a big one. You know, the Greek word for offense is translated trap. Are you hearing me? You know why somebody grows up and they're 55, but they act like they're 15? Because when they was 15, they got offended. They got molested. They got hurt. They got abused. Come on. Hallelujah. And their soul got trapped at 15. It never got to develop. Hallelujah. And it's holding up the oil. Am I helping anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's holding up the oil because you can't move into the season God has for you now. There's a season God has for you now and you've got to let God deliver you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said you got to let God deliver you. I said you got to let God deliver you. You've got to let God break you free. You've got to let God cut those ties. You've got to let God help you let go. Come on, somebody say, God help me to let go. This message, this sermon tonight or whatever I'm doing up here ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be well put together. It may sound scattered, but I'll, I'll hit somebody. Like I got a buckshot tonight. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll scatter them pellets and I'll hit somebody somewhere. Is anybody with me in this place? Come on. Hallelujah. Anybody feel like you need to let go? You need to let go of what hurts you. You need to let go of what didn't work out. You need to let go of who didn't work out. You need to let go of that relationship that failed. You need to let go of that mistake you made. You need to understand that the blood of Jesus is bigger than all of it and you need to move on. God says, I've got some oil for your life, but I got some oil for your life, but you got to let go. You got to let go. How long are you going to mourn? Huh? How long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to stay emotionally attached to this season that you're not in anymore and God's ready for you to move on? Are you here, man? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you where the breakthrough comes. Can I tell you where the breakthrough comes? Watch this. Watch this. Watch where the breakthrough comes. And Samuel said, how can I go? How can I go and release this oil? If Saul hear it, he'll kill me. If Saul hears that I'm going down to Jesse's house to anoint one of his sons to be the king, he will kill me before I get there. Right? Because Saul's trying to protect his throne. Whatever that is you're holding on to doesn't want you to let go. Am I talking in this place? Whatever you're holding on to in the past that's hindering the oil in your life, I feel it. Hallelujah. It doesn't want you to let go. The devil doesn't want you to let go. The devil doesn't want you to move on. When the, That's why some of you get so attacked because you start coming into church and you start getting delivered and you start moving on and then the enemy attacks. Why? Because he doesn't want you to move on. You got a Saul spirit coming after you. I said you got a Saul spirit coming after you. You know why? Because the minute you get delivered and move on and let go and that oil begins to flow, that spirit's going to lose its place in your life. It's not going to be able to keep you up at night. It's not going to be able to depress you. It's not going to be able to keep you on medication. It's not going to be able to destroy your marriage. And the devil don't want to let go of his place. But I need somebody in this house tonight to let Saul know that I'm moving on. Come on. Come on. Is there anybody in this house that say I'm moving on? I'm moving on tonight. i got to have the oil. I can't stay here in a dead, dry place without the anointing. i got to have the oil. And if i got to move on to get the oil. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, move on. Move on, move on, move on, move on. God's got some oil for you. Move on. God's got some oil for you. Anybody believe God's got some oil for you? Oh, hallelujah. Samuel said, how can I go? Watch this. Watch this. How? how notice he says, how? How? Everybody say, how? How can I go? He's asking God. Watch this. He's asking God, how can I move on? 
if I try to move on, Saul is going to kill me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch what God says. Watch what God says. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord and then call Jesse to the sacrifice and in the middle of the sacrifice watch this in the middle of the worship service come on I will give you revelation and I'll show you what to do and you will anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee watch what God says Samuel says how can I move on watch God's answer watch God's answer you can move on in worship oh y'all didn't get it okay hallelujah hallelujah let me say it again because somebody didn't get it hallelujah how can I move on if I try to move on every time I try to move on something trips me up every time I try to move on Clayton I fall back into that cycle every time I try to move on somebody pops up into my life out of nowhere and starts doing stuff and saying stuff every time I move on something always trips me up how can I move on God God is telling Telling you the same thing he's told Samuel move on and worship the only way to move on is you got to move on and worship worship will break the chains of the past worship will break the bondage I don't know who in the world I'm talking to in this place but worship will get you out of your mess worship will get you free worship will get you loose from that addiction worship somebody shout worship <laughs> See, worship, worship, worship. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. He says, he says, he says to Saul, he says, or he says to Samuel, he says, Samuel, watch this. Here's how you're going to move on from Saul. You're going to move on in the disguise of worship. In other words, you're going to go anoint David to be king, but you're going to disguise it in worship. Hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. Maybe I shouldn't have said this. Oh, hallelujah. What y'all want a difference? This is all I got. Hallelujah. I don't have nothing else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, You're going to go and release the oil. The oil come. The oil is going to be released in the disguise or under the protection of worship. <laughs> Oh, if you go and just go without worship, Samuel, you will not release the oil. The enemy will get you. But if you'll go in worship, if you'll go in worship, you can release this oil and you can move on from the Saul era into the David era. Because God was letting Samuel know, Samuel, here's the thing. Here's, watch this. Here's the thing. <clears throat> if you just go anoint David, Saul will find out and he'll kill you. But if he sees that you're just going to Jesse's house to worship, yeah, hallelujah. He'll think it's just a worship service and he won't think nothing's happening and he'll leave you alone. Are you hearing me? The enemy will leave you alone in worship. Come on, somebody. See, come on, come on, come on, come on. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. That's why you can't move on on a couch in front of a therapist. That's why you can't move on getting a pill from a doctor. Come on, somebody. That's why you can't move on buying a new house and buying a new car. No, the only way to move on is to get in worship because it's in worship that the chains are broken. It's in worship that the mountains are moved. It's in worship. Look at somebody and say, worship if you want to move on. Worship, 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 because it's a place the enemy cannot get to you. Oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. I got some other stuff to get to. But, but it's in worship that the enemy can't get to you. 
It's in worship that you come into the, come on, you come into the Psalms 91 and 1. You come into the, come, yeah, tell me, come on, preach with me. You come into the what? Some of y'all are preaching with me. It's in worship that you come into the secret place. Come on, you come under the shadow of the Almighty. And I've preached this before, but why is it secret? Not because you can't find it, but it's because the devil can't. Oh, come on. I said, come on, Malibu Shandaya. It's a secret place. It's a secret place. It's actually a place, and we preached about it this morning. It's that it's it's Zion. You come to Zion. And what's that Zion? The blood. And the devil, oh, hallelujah. Y'all ain't been at church long enough. You ain't been around enough for them old saints because the old saints used to say the devil can't cross the bloodline. I know you don't hear that preached much anymore, but I still believe it. Come on, hallelujah. It worked for my grandma. It worked for my grandpa. It worked for my mom, and it's worked for me. The devil can't cross the bloodline. See, when you worship, you go into the, the blood. See, oh, hallelujah. Watch me, please. Watch me, please. So, so there was a day in the book of Job. Ah, oh, God, help me, Jesus. There was a day in the book of Job that Satan presented himself before God, before his throne, with all of the sons of God, the angels. So in the book of Job, what we see is Satan had access into the throne room of God. Why did he have access in the throne room of God? Because I don't have time, but Adam's sin contaminated everything all the way up to God. The only thing it didn't contaminate was God. But it contaminated everything else. Why do you say that, Sean? I say that because when Moses built... Oh, come on. Y'all still with me? Y'all y'all want this? Okay. When Moses built his tabernacle, Austin, his tabernacle on earth was a replica of the original tabernacle in heaven. So when Moses built his tabernacle, he built it and it was a replica of, of God's temple in heaven. So the holies of holies was where God had his throne. It represented the place that God set. But Miss Natty, what we find is when Moses prepared the tabernacle and he got all the instruments and the furniture and everything, in the tabernacle you know what he had to do he had to take the blood of a lamb and he had to sprinkle it on all the instruments why because he had to sanctify the temple and if you read in Hebrews Austin you read where what Moses did everything Moses did in the tabernacle was preaching what Jesus was going to come oh, come on y'all y'all follow me come on keep coming with me because Moses sprinkled everything to sacrifice to, to, to sanctify and to cleanse everything in the temple and so when Jesus our high priest laid down his body at the cross and shed his blood he picked up his blood mom and he went back into the heavens and he sanctified it everything Adam everything Adam defiled Jesus sanctified him so now whew, the devil that had access in Job didn't get access after the cross let me say that one more time. Satan that had access in the book of Job get lost access after the cross. Why? Because the blood is now uh, and the devil can't. So, so when you worship, you don't just go to the presence of God. You go into the blood. And come on, somebody. The devil can't touch you when you worship. He can't hit you when you worship. So it's in worship that we hear God's voice because the devil's not there to. It's in worship that we get revelation. It's in worship. He said, I'll show you while you're worshiping. Come on. Come on, Samuel. I'll show you while you're worshiping. I'll show you how to get this oil to flow while you're worshiping. <laughs> while you're worshiping, I'll show you how to fix your marriage. While you're, well, oh, come on, somebody. Not while you're reading a book, unless it's the Bible. But while you're worshiping, 
I'll show you how to take care of your children. While you're worshiping, I'll show you what to do with your finances. While, oh my God, hallelujah. While you're worshiping. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Look at somebody and say, if you want to move on, you got to worship. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, some of y'all missed it a while ago. Some of y'all missed it that last hour that Amber was singing and the anointing was flowing and you were, some of y'all missed it because that was your opportunity to move on and some of y'all didn't move on. Some of y'all stayed right where you was at. Some of y'all was like, I wish this would hurry up. I don't know why we ain't moving on, hallelujah. But some of y'all, if you really knew what was happening, you'd have got free while you, oh. Come on, did anybody get free tonight? If you really knew what was happening, you'd have heard a word from the Lord while you were worshiping. Yeah. Yeah, that oil, that oil will flow in worship. Hallelujah. Are you receiving this? Hallelujah. And so, can we read on? Yeah, hallelujah. And he says, whew. Verse 4, Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, you come peaceably? Uh, Hallelujah. And he said, yeah, I come peaceably because prophets didn't always come with a good word. I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. I've come to worship. Sanctify yourselves. We don't do a whole lot of that today. Huh? God says, sanctify yourselves when you come to worship. Come on, somebody. What you know what makes it God almighty. You know what makes it so hard for us sometimes to lead people into worship is because we're leading unsanctified people. Your mind is everywhere. Your heart is everywhere. He says, you go sanctify yourselves. We still need to sanctify ourselves when we come into worship. We need to sanctify our minds, sanctify our hearts. Hallelujah. You shouldn't be listening to that worldly music, but sure shouldn't be listening to it on the way to church. Huh? Hallelujah. Finishing that R-rated Netflix movie right before you come to the house of God. How in the world are you going to get your mind in the presence of God? Lusting after that naked woman on that television hallelujah sanctify yourselves before you come into worship that's not my job that's your job let me go over job descriptions let me go over job descriptions my job is to worship him and get his presence in the room your job is to come in ready oh hallelujah hallelujah I'm talking about what hinders the oil I'm still talking about that. Hallelujah. I'm come to sacrifice. Lord, sanctify yourselves. Come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons. Boy, I don't know where this is going. This could go a lot of ways. Hallelujah. But he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Watch this. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But guess what? The oil didn't flow. Oh, the oil didn't flow. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I've refused him. Mm -hmm. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Come on. Mm. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the, the heart. Here's... Here's what else is hindering the oil. We're not seeing what God sees. We're not seeing what God sees. Hallelujah. We're not seeing what God sees. God sees the heart. We're not seeing the heart. We're not seeing the heart. We're not seeing what God, God saw in the heart. On the outside, he looked like a king. On the outside, he looked like he fit the part. On the outside, come on, on the outside, on the outside. You know what? Samuel had not moved on yet. He was still looking for Saul. 
He's in the middle of worship looking. Wow. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. He's in the middle of worship, still praying for that past to turn around and for God to do something. With, come on, hallelujah. Still wanting us all, still wanting what he had, still looking for what he had. In the middle of worship and God's trying to release the oil and he's still wanting God to bless what used to be. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I've had people come up to me and they want words from me, but I didn't give them the word they wanted. You know why I didn't give them the word they wanted? Because they wanted me to bless something that God had rejected in their life. They wanted me to speak to something and tell them that God's going to work it all out and God's going to fix it. And sometimes God ain't going to work some stuff out. He's not going to fix it. Hallelujah. You're going to have to move on. They want me to tell them that, yeah, it's okay. You can live with this and God will still bless you. You can live with this and God will still use you. But no, that's not the word that God they got. The word was repent. Get this thing out of your life. Get oh, Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And God will raise you up. Uh, here's Saul, here's Samuel, and he's in the middle of worship, but he's looking for what he has. He's not seeing what God sees. And here's the problem in the church. We're trying to, we're trying to anoint stuff that God ain't chose. Come on, can I say that? Hallelujah. Can I, can I say that? Hallelujah. Let me move on to the church a little bit. I was on you. I'll get off of you for a minute. Hallelujah. And let me move on to the church. The problem in the church today is we're trying to anoint what God hasn't chosen. You know what? Let me get back on you because you're doing that in your life. You're trying to anoint what God hasn't chosen. Oh, he's so nice and he's so pretty and he's so cute, but is he chosen? Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me now. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, she's so nice to me. And she's so, and she, oh, she talks in tongues. And oh, she, but is she chosen? God on my shut up Messiah. Well, they they said when they hired me, I'd get a bonus and I knew that. But was it chosen? We're trying to anoint stuff and pour oil on stuff that God isn't chosen. And God's not going to let the oil flow on what he's rejected. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I don't know what you are trying to accept that God has rejected, but you ain't going to get oil on anything that God has not chosen in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can wrestle with him. You can turn that horn upside down if you want to, but the oil ain't coming out of it. I said the oil ain't coming out of it. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Hallelujah. 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 And so, watch this, watch this. Because, are y'all still with me? Hallelujah. Whoo, Jesus, I didn't know this was going to go like this. I really didn't know how this was going to go. Whew. Ah, but the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance. You're not looking right, Samuel. Look at your neighbor and say, you might not be looking right. You might not be looking with the right eyes. Huh? You got to look with the eyes of your heart. Oh, but Samuel, don't look on his countenance or the height of his stature. I've refused him. Don't, Samuel, quit looking at stuff that don't matter. Quit trying to weigh this thing out and say, well, this is God and the oil is going to come on this by, 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 and justifying it by stuff that doesn't matter. Are you hearing me? There's stuff that doesn't matter. There's wolves in sheep's clothing. And if you judge them by the wool on them, instead of what's inside the wool, and only God knows what's inside the wool, come on, hallelujah, you are going to hinder the oil in your life and invite the enemy in. But you, you can't judge a sheep and see the wolf 
on your own. You got to go into worship. Worship begins to, re come on somebody, is this helping anybody? Worship begins to reveal what God's got his oil on. Are you hearing me? I said worship reveals what God's got his oil on. I didn't come to this church because it looked like it was something I should do. Matter of fact, my wife said it won't work. She wasn't supportive at all. When I said I was going to come to this church in the, three years ago, she said it won't work. You won't be able to do it. Hallelujah. But understand something. I wasn't making a decision and I wasn't saying that the oil is going to be on this because it was a Pentecostal church or because everybody in there spoke in tongues like me or everybody in there agreed with me or everybody in there liked me. That's not why I believed the oil was on what I was doing. It was because in worship, God said the next door I open to you, walk through it. And that was the next door. I didn't judge it by what I saw. I judged it by what I heard in worship. Come on, somebody. The oil will be found in worship. If you want the oil, get out of your carnal senses. Right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. Yeah. And see, thank God that Thank God that Samuel was in worship because the presence of the Lord was there and he was able to hear the voice of God because he was about to anoint something God hadn't chosen and God was able to speak to him. Oh, Samuel, this is wrong. Now, whoo, Jesus. I got to move on. I, I got, I want to I show you, yeah, let me move on from this. But look, let me show you this first. But the Lord said to Samuel, uh, verse 8, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. All right, the oil wasn't flowing. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. The oil wouldn't flow. Come on. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord's not chosen any of these. The oil ain't flowing. Are you hearing me? Am I boring y'all? Are y'all good? Okay, hallelujah. Can I continue on? Okay, hallelujah. All right. Samuel said to Jesse, are here all your children? Because these are all I see. But the Lord did tell me that I was going to anoint one of your sons. He did tell me the oil was going to flow here. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. He did tell me the oil was going to flow here. So uh, there must be another son. God didn't send me. Oh, hallelujah. God didn't send me here to get stuck. Oh, I got a word. Can I, can I release that word to somebody? Come on, hallelujah. God did not send you into this season to get stuck. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, can I get this out? Lord, help me to get this out to somebody because God said, I didn't put you where you are and you know I put you where you are. I didn't put you where you are for the oil to get stopped up. So God says, don't give up on this. Oh, I felt that. I just felt that, Austin. Don't give up on this season it <laughs> did you feel that Woo, that was a word hallelujah Samuel don't leave Jesse's house the oil's gonna flow Samuel don't go back home the oil's gonna flow I want to tell somebody don't get that divorce the oil's gonna flow I want to tell somebody don't give up right now the oil's gonna flow I want to tell somebody don't walk away the oil's gonna flow Oh, you came to the right place, Samuel. The oil's gonna flow. Come on, Anthony, you came to the right place. The oil's gonna flow. Somebody shout the oil. It's stopped up now, but it's gonna flow. Oh, I felt that. Whew, I felt that. I felt that. Because some of you said, maybe I'm in the wrong place. Maybe I'm in the wrong. Oh, that's for somebody. I don't know who you are. Hallelujah. But the oil's gonna flow. He said, there's got to be, there's got to be another son. There's got to be another son. I said, there's got to be another son. Ooh, there's got to be another son. Oh, 
And Samuel said to Jesse, are these all your children? He said, there remaineth yet the youngest. <clears throat> and behold, he keeps the sheep. And we didn't go get him. We didn't think he needed to be up here. Come on, somebody. Oh, I just felt that. Hallelujah. I just heard the Lord say, some of you, the devil's been hiding what will make the oil flow. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Hallelujah. God, I know it's too late for some of you, but I don't know if anybody got a hold of that. But the God said the devil's been hiding what it's going to cost the oil to flow. Come on. He's been setting on a gift. He's been setting on a revelation. He's been setting. Oh, God. Yeah. Ah, I felt that. I felt that. Somebody shout, devil. Get off of that. Come on. Get off of that. Get off of that. Get off of that. Get off of it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I felt that. Ha, ta, bo, sha, ta, ba, ta, ya, ta, bo, sha. Ha, God's got something in the season that's going to make the oil flow. And the devil's been hiding it from you. But he's about to let go. Woo. He's about to let go of that answer. He's about to let go of that revelation. He's about to let go of that gift. He's about to let go of it. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, somebody. Whatever the devil was sitting on in amber, he got off of it tonight. And the oil began to flow. Come on, somebody. The devil's about to get off of it. Can I give you another word? Whew. Hallelujah. Y'all right, Tyson? You following me? All right. Can I give you another word? Quit rejecting what will make the oil flow. Oh, I felt the Holy Ghost on that. Hallelujah. Quit rejecting what will make the oil flow. Hallelujah. The only thing that was going to make the oil flow was David, but everybody was rejecting him. Everybody was keeping him in the back. Everybody was keeping him. Come on, somebody. Some of you are ashamed of some stuff. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Some of you are ashamed of some stuff, but God said that very thing that you're ashamed of is the thing that's going to make the oil flow. I felt that. Hallelujah. I ain't getting a whole lot of amens on that, but that crazy dance that you are ashamed of is the very thing that's going to make the oil flow. Come on, somebody. That word that you're too scared to release. It's going to make the oil flow. Whew. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I felt that the devil's about to get off of some stuff. The devil's about to get off of some stuff. I felt that, Miss Christina, the devil's about to get off of some stuff. I feel that in this house. I'm trying. I got to move on, but I feel that. Hallelujah. Mr. Lawrence, the devil's about to get off of some stuff. There's some stuff in your life that God is going to cause the oil to flow on, and the devil don't want you to find it. He don't want you to love it. He don't want you to want it. He wants you to reject it. But God said, get off of it, devil. The oil's got to flow. Oh, somebody shout, the oil's got to flow. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all with me? Come on, you still walking with me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And he sent and brought him. Whew, and he was ruddy and of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, let the oil flow. <laughs> let the oil flow. This is him. This is it. Let the oil flow. Hallelujah. Let the oil flow. Let the oil flow. This is it. Let the oil flow. Let the oil flow. Let the oil flow. Right in the middle of worship. Let the oil flow. Oh, let the oil flow. Let the oil flow. Open your eyes and let the oil flow. See your David and let the oil flow. Come on. Come on. Call your David out of the shepherd's fields and let the oil flow. Come on, somebody. Say, let the oil flow. Shalabu oh. Shataya. Come on, don't hold that preaching gift back anymore. 
Don't hold that prophetic gift back anymore. Don't hold that praise back anymore. Don't hold that giving back anymore. Don't, don't hold that money back anymore that you need to give to the house of God or the kingdom of God or wherever God's telling you to give it. Don't hold it back anymore. Hallelujah. Call your David up. Come on, David. Hallelujah. Come on, David. Nobody thought you could be anything, but come on. Nobody thought you looked right, but come on. Everybody thought you were too young, but come on, David. The oil's got to flow. I need the oil. Anybody believe this generation needs the oil? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Can I show you something else? Hallelujah. How long have I been up here? I don't even know. Hallelujah. About what? About 40 minutes or so. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at this. The same chapter. Um verse 17 let's just let's let's try verse 17 Saul said to his servants provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me uh, Saul was troubled by demons come on he had devils tormenting him and they figured well let's find somebody that can play music and soothe him and refresh him and so they found David <laughs> Uh, old David covered by the oil. Come on, hallelujah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. And so they, 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 Saul said to his servants, provide me a man that can play well and bring him to me. And, and then answered one of his servants and said, behold, I've seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite that is cunning and playing. He didn't know how to call it anointed. He just called him a good, a good uh, musician. <laughs> And a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and a prudent in manner, matters, and calmly person, and the Lord is with him. Yeah, yeah, that's the anointing. <laughs> Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. Hallelujah. Jesse just can't keep David. <laughs> He can't keep him in the shepherd's feet. He can't keep him in obscurity. He can't keep him in the dark. Because the oil, once you get the oil on, you got to put a demand on the oil. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody. I said once the oil gets on you, God will put a demand on the oil, and you won't be able to stay in obscurity. Oh, God Almighty. Saul sent messengers to Jesse, send me David. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. And David said, David came to Saul and watched that stood before him, and he loved him greatly. He loved him greatly. See that? Saul loved him, right? And he became his armor bearer, right? Follow me on this. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. And Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Hallelujah. So notice when the oil flowed. Come on. Hallelujah. When the oil flowed through David's playing, the demons left. But I want you to notice this. In this season, because I'm going to make a point to you because I'm talking about what hinders the oil. Because I want to help somebody get free. Uh, in this season, Saul loved David. And so he received from David. Let me go. Let me go over here. Go to um, 1 Samuel 18. Tosh, 1 Samuel 18. David has killed Goliath, and now he's, he's serving Saul, and he's warring for Saul. Now Saul's still troubled by these demons, but I want you to see the shift. Talking about what hinders the oil. I got to show this to somebody. I was going to skip over this, but I, I, the Lord's like, no, somebody needs to hear this. Look at this. And it says, <clears throat> verse 5, 
of First Samuel chapter 18. David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Amen. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing, dancing, and meeting King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Watch this, please. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit, to say what needs to be said. Saul was very wroth. He was angry. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they've ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me, they've only ascribed but thousands. What can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. Meaning that Saul began to be envious and jealous of David. In the last chapter, Saul loved David. In this chapter, he's now received a spirit of jealousy towards David. His heart has shifted. Watch this. His heart has shifted towards the oil. Oh, hallelujah. And watch what happens. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. As at other times. Now what happened in the other times that David played? What happened to the demons? They left. But that was when Saul loved. But now things have shifted in Saul's heart and he's not loving David anymore. He's got a spirit of jealousy. Come on, somebody. Something's got into his heart. Something's crept into his heart. Watch what happens. Watch the response. It says, David played with his hand as at other times and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I'll smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. Listen to me. Listen to me. When, da when Saul loved David, the oil flowed and demons left. But when Saul received evil into his heart, the same spirits that the oil ran off the oil began to stir up. Are you hearing me? And he rejected the oil. Matter of fact, he tried to kill the man with the oil. He wasn't trying to kill nobody else. <laughs> huh? Just the one with the oil. Some folks, the oil is hindered in your life because you've allowed... Is this all right? I don't know who I'm asking. I'm the pastor. Hallelujah. But I guess the Lord. Some of you are rejecting the oil. The oil is not flowing in your life because something's wrong with your heart. You've got something in there. And it don't rise up all the time just when the oil's flowing. Huh? Huh? Yeah, you'll almost forgive somebody out in the world that does you wrong. But the minute the oil starts flowing from somebody, you'll get mad, <clears throat> you'll get upset, you'll get hurt, you'll get bitter, you shut down on your praise. Yeah, I ain't gonna praise. They can holler at me if they want to, I ain't getting up there. Well, fine, hallelujah, stay back there. <clears throat> Stay back there in your mess and stay back there in your struggle and stay back there in your depression and stay back there. Hallelujah. I can't deliver you if you don't want to be delivered. People will bring people up to me in, in revival meetings and all this stuff and they say, they drag them up there. You watch them. It's like they got, they're behind, they're two feet behind and they got their hand on their arm and they just almost throw them up there and I'm standing there looking at them. They're like, I look at them and I look at them and I look at back and they're like, they're like, she needs prayer. <laughs> What am I supposed to do with that? I can't deliver nobody. 
I can't deliver nobody. But in this revival, there was somebody sitting two rows back and they got saved the night before and they come out. Uh, I don't want to say what they come out of, but they come out of some stuff and you can see it all over them. And I'm preaching and they're sitting there and their eyes are glowing and their eyes are big and you can tell they're hungry and you can tell they want the spirit of God. And the Lord spoke to me and said, deliver them. And I called them up. I said, come here. And they came up here and I laid hands on them and it wasn't three seconds, hallelujah, to the devil's were coming out of them. It didn't take long. Hallelujah. They were laying on the floor and the devils were coming out of them because they wanted it. Because they were hungry. Are you hearing me? Some of you the oil's not flowing in your life because you got stuff in your heart you need to deal with. And you don't want to deal with it. But you want uh, yeah. you want it broken. Hallelujah. But Saul had something in his heart, Mom, that in this season made him reject the oil when before he was receiving it openly and it was flowing. What got in your heart? Huh? What got in your heart? I know. I ain't preaching. I ain't preaching nothing to you that God ain't already preached to me. I've sat in church services like you right now skeptical of everything that was going on pessimistic sarcastic about the move of God watching everybody judging everybody and you know why it had nothing to do with the church it was me I let something in my heart that was causing me to not receive the oil are you hearing me? And there come a day that I had to humble down. There come a day in worship that I had to break down in tears, big tears, hot tears falling down my face, boo-hooing on the floor, squalling. Why? Because God had to get that thing out of my heart that was hindering the oil. That thing that wasn't letting me hear a preacher preach. It wasn't letting me worship when a singer was singing. It wasn't letting me receive in a church service. I, some of y'all come in here like that. And it ain't me. And it ain't the singers. Are you hearing me? It's your heart. And you've let something in your heart. Bitterness, envy, jealousy, strife whatever and you're not receiving you're like Saul I'd rather throw javelins today than to receive are you hearing me hmm I said are you hearing me oh my god hallelujah I either killed it or God's doing something I don't know hallelujah one of the two hallelujah he's either doing something right now or I just killed this thing hallelujah hallelujah I want the oil <laughs> Austin, I want the oil. I want the oil. I don't know what you want. I want the oil. And what that means for me, I will humble down. I will break down. I will fall on my face. I will admit that I'm wrong. I will admit that I didn't get it right. I will admit that I don't know everything. I will admit that I've been stupid. I will admit that I've been a mess. I will admit that I should have kept my mouth shut. I will admit that I shouldn't have looked at that and I shouldn't have went there and I shouldn't have did because I want the oil. <clears throat> You know, once you've been in the oil, nothing else will do. Come on, somebody. I said, once you've been in the oil, a regular church service won't do. It's Jennifer, once you've been in the oil, a regular preacher won't do. A good singer won't do when you've been in the oil. Come on, somebody. I said a good singer that can sing with the best of them. You can put them on the voice and they can probably win. That won't do when you've been in the oil. Come on, give me somebody that can't carry a tune in the bucket, but they got the oil. I want the oil. Anybody want the oil? I said, anybody want the oil? Come on, if you want the oil, give God a praise. And listen, I want the oil at whatever cost. At whatever cost, I want the oil. 
If that means I got to get rid of something, repent of something, let go of something, cut ties with something, move on from something. Come on. Hallelujah. Quit rejecting something. All of these things I talked to you about, and all of these things the Holy Ghost talked to you about, because I had no idea I was going to say all this stuff. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost said it while I was up here. Hallelujah. All of these things that the Holy Ghost pulled out of these scriptures to teach us. Hallelujah. Come on. If you want the oil, hallelujah, you really want the oil, you got to want it to the point that you're willing to, 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 to get rid of all of these things and let go of all of these things. Come on. And quit rejecting things that God's chosen to use. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, let me say this. Let me say this, and I'm done. Y'all can remain standing that are standing. We're going to pray for some folks. Hallelujah. But um, uh, I want to read this one verse to you in Psalms 92. Don't go nowhere. I'm done. This is it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout it again. I want the oil. I want the oil. Psalms 92. This is a prophetic word. This is a prophetic word. This is a prophetic word. God's about to shake some things. This world's about to shake. And everything, all of creation is about to be taken out of its place. And God is going to set up his kingdom. Are you hearing me? I don't know what you're focused on or what, pri what got, you know, priorities you got or whatever. But you better focus on the kingdom. Are you hearing me? Because we're coming down to it. I said we're coming down to it. I don't have time right now. I don't even know that I could. But when you look at prophecy and the Jewish calendar, you know, God doesn't go by our Gregorian calendar. He goes by the Jewish calendar. It's different than ours. We're somewhere around the year of, of, of 5,987. 5, we're almost to the 6,000th year. Hallelujah. And, and the Jewish rabbis believe. And around about that time, I don't have time, hallelujah, I don't know why I'm saying this, that, that, the, that the Messiah is coming back. Now for us, that means rapture. For them, that means coming back to the earth, but for us, it means rapture. Church, we're in about, I believe, this is Sean Campbell, don't quote me on this, but I believe we're in about a 30 to 40 year window of the Lord coming back. Are you hearing me? I no man knows the hour of the day, but we're somewhere. We're somewhere in about a 30 to 40 year window of the Lord coming back. Woo, I'm getting excited. Anybody getting excited? I said anybody getting excited. And I know there's people like Mom and Miss Jeanette. They've done seeing all the world they want to see. They'll probably be glad if he just went ahead and come on back. Hallelujah. I know some of you young ones, you got some things you want to do and see. But, the, but some of us are ready to go. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I said, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And, we ain't, and when we go, we ain't going to be floating on clouds playing harps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be working for the king. We're going to be ruling and reigning. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. But church, in this last day, I want to give you this prophetic word that I, I feel the Lord ushering me to say. Let me find the verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, verse 10. Put verse 10. Nine, Psalms 92, verse 10. Can you make it bigger? Make it a little bit bigger. Make sure everybody can see it. Real quick, I'll give you a second. Hallelujah. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 92. In this last day, when God is about, when everything's about to fold up, let me give this prophetic word to the church. Hallelujah. He's going to make that bigger. Did you, can you get it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Look at this. Verse 10. But my horn 
shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh Oh, hallelujah. Here, here's the word. Here's the word. Here's the word. Fresh oil is coming. Ooh, hallelujah. God is preaching this tonight and he's talking to us about what hinders the oil because a fresh oil is coming. I was thinking about this verse. I know I got you standing. We're going to pray. I was thinking about this, this psalm. And it's not ascribed to any certain author. But I thought, what if it was David? <clears throat> what if David wrote this psalm and he said... I shall be anointed with fresh oil or there's going to be a fresh anointing come on me. And what if he was thinking about the first time he got anointed? And he was saying, Lord, I want a refreshing. Come on. Come on, somebody. I want a refreshing of that oil. I think David, if, if this was David, maybe he was thinking about this time. He was thinking back about when the prophet poured all the oil on him and how he went out in the shepherd's field and killed the lion and the bear and how he played the harp and ran devils off and how he slayed a giant and how God brought him to the, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And David was saying, you know what? God, refresh me. Give me a another anybody need a refreshing tonight come on I said come on I want fresh oil. somebody shout I want fresh oil say Lord anoint me with fresh oil shout it I shall be anointed with fresh oil refresh the oil that's what I'm hearing I'm gonna refresh the oil so what are you saying I'm saying get ready because another Acts chapter 2 is coming <laughs> another Acts chapter 2 is coming oh somebody come on another Acts chapter 2 is coming I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy anybody ready for fresh oil come on church we're going to come out into the streets drunk again we're going to come out doing miracles again we're going to come out healing the sick again oh Come on, come on, I want fresh oil. Come on, lift your hands in this house and say, Lord, I want fresh oil. Oh, fresh oil. Refresh me, God. Refresh me, God. Refresh me, God. Refresh me, God. That that you poured out on Peter. That that you poured out on John. Poured out on me, Lord. Hey, I want it. I want it. Oh, come on, somebody. Let go of your past. Let go of your hurts. Let go of everything that's hindering the oil. I hope you heard me tonight. I hope you heard the Holy Ghost tonight. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down tonight. Lay it down. Why? Because there's a fresh oil coming. You don't want to stop it. I said there's a fresh oil coming and you don't want to hinder it. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a fresh oil coming and you don't want to have a cart full of sin that can't receive it. Come on. Fresh oil is coming and you don't want to be stuck in the past and you can't get what God's pouring out. There's a fresh oil. Oh, there's a fresh oil. Money under la bush, money under higher. Money under high, corny under high, la bush under high, la money under high, la bush under high. Come on, lift your hands. Open your mouth. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost Church. There's a fresh oil. 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 Release it, God. Release it, God. Release it, God. Even in this house tonight, God. Begin to release it, God. Begin to release it. Oh. Oh, but I shall. Oh. 
there it is.